Happy Friday, everybody. Josh here on the wrong lead. Another episode of You Gotta Be Shots hitting me. Joined by Mr. Matt Carlson. Matt, how you doing, my friend? Not too bad. You know, we're uh, we're one week in and uh, you know, we're we're above water. That's a good thing. Happy Valley tried to tried to kill me, as it always does, but you know. Last week at shot ten was actually not that bad. So uh, you know, a couple couple decent shots. But yeah, we're uh we're rolling. We're back in it. <laughs> yeah, friend of the show, uh Russ, uh, he messaged me. He's like, Please tell me you played the trifecta in the last race. I'm like, Russ, I did not play the trifecta <laughs> in the last race. Because uh the, the three horses I gave out finished one, two, three. And uh that they it did. paid pretty nice. Uh that but, it did. uh yeah, that that didn't happen. Unfortunately, I, I I didn't see the other two races even remotely close to right. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, race uh, race eight. What was it? Harmony and Blessed or whatever comes in at you know whatever God price it came in at seventy something to one or six. Harmony and Blessed won again. Did it? No. I who was it oh. that won race eight on uh on watch call on on last Sunday? Hold on, oh, I I you have up. to look it up. I, so while you're looking that up, so last week. Uh, there was I, I there was a couple I had a couple of sins. Um, uh, I think the most notable one I had, and I can't find uh, my PPs from last week now for some reason. But um, the race that I'd featured the, as my my pick outside of the, the late pick three, um, I completely got the board wrong. I thought Chu Chow Spirit was absolutely going to be. Two to one in that race, I thought looked like absolutely the best horse in that race, and I wanted to get around Chu Chow Spirit. Chu Chow Spirit goes off at like five to one, and I'm like, well, in that case, I, I would have I would have bet that horse at five to one. I thought that was the best horse in the race, um, and uh, so things kind of didn't go didn't go the way that uh, that I saw with the, with the board. But you know, that, that's one that's kind of the the tough thing i think about public handicapping doing the stuff that uh that we do um you know uh, obviously i um i very much bet what i give out uh when i do stuff so if i handicap pick five and i give out a ticket i'm absolutely playing that so if you ever if you guys ever see you know me putting anything out um you know i i did uh a friday um a friday hundred dollar bankroll uh, show with uh, the Wolf of Oak Lawn on uh, Chase Sessoms on uh, on the Notorious OTB. So if you guys check that out, I'm I'm playing that pick three and I'm slamming that pick three I gave out. So um, I, I thought that that those three races looked uh, looked pretty good. So uh, check that out uh, if you're interested in that. But yeah, I that that definitely would have been a time where I would have been on Twitter being like everything I said in the podcast was wrong. This horse is absolutely the wrong price. Bet Choo Chow Spirit. And <laughs> um yeah, Choo Chow Spirit wins and um the horse that I liked to uh finish the Quinella finished second. So that would have been a nice Quinella. Uh, I thought the the top two cho- would have been the top two choices, but uh apparently I believe the six horse in that race took a bunch of money. Um off the top of my head I don't remember the uh the name of the horse, but yeah, it was a it was a it was a weird uh, weird race I picked there, um, you know. And then I I didn't see the next two races very well, and and then nailed the last race. But by that time, uh, I was I was dead and everything. So, yeah. Um, one, it was it was harmony and home harmony and home. By the way, not harmony and bless. Sorry, okay. I get those. I get my uh, harmony and confused sometimes because harmony and blessed i think did run uh yes. on saturday too and i believe so and i try to make a case on... for that horse every time he runs but yes yeah yeah I, I i get confused there's a lot of you know similarly named horses from an ownership perspective that do tend to confuse me at one in the morning when yeah. i start betting these things but kaying yeah uh, kaying zing kaying yeah from the the kaying syndicates always mess me <laughs> up yes um but yeah i mean to your point i mean i felt the same exact way actually race 10 right i mean the two horses i gave out were one was the 12 prince of porty who i was like you know okay fair value i'll put it at you know 10 to 1 and it went off 13 i'm like that's a great bet and the horse finished fifth it ran respectably but the the other horse that i picked as an a gorgeous win i was like this was a drop from class two it's probably the best horse in the race you know i expected three to one and i'm always hesitant to give out a horse at three to one you know on on twitter right there's just not a lot of wiggle room in it and i'm always like if i have two horses i'll just give the longer price right it's you know it's more fun to pick a bomb but that horse went off at you know five to one that that was ridiculous i mean the horse won by like three lengths and 
you know, had I been awake at five in the morning watching that, I probably would have been like, this price is insane. Uh, I mean, it's tough too, because you don't know what late money is going to do here, right? You always hear them be like, oh, this horse is going brown lamped and things like that, which is where a horse, you know, its odds get cut in half from what they expected, right? From a morning line perspective. So um, that's kind of how they alert you that CAWs are really keyed in on a horse is to call them brown lamp. So if you ever hear that, but you know, by that point, your money is probably not actually getting into the pool. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough. Um, you know, ideally, right. I'd be doing what Keith Bush does and posting, you know, fair value for every single horse in the race, right. A lot of the AI stuff and modeling he's doing is really good from that perspective. Cause if you say, Hey, here's what I expect those odds to be and you see a horse drift that way or another, right? Something that you might not think is a good bet all of a sudden becomes a really good bet on price, even if you don't love that horse, right? Um, there's always, you know, this is a gambling game first and foremost. So that's uh, that's kind of it, right? It, it's all price dependent. You could talk about horses and handicap until you're blue in the face, but the betting aspect of it is really the important part. And that's what, you know, especially you kind of miss trying to give these things out days in advance and not really watching and being able to bet real time. So hey it's tough but you know you you kind of pay that for for getting a really good product yeah no for sure and you know and that's one of the nice things that that they do say on um uh on the broadcast right they'll be like hey this horse is you know this price but it's coming down right it's, it's into this price now and like you can kind of tell that that, that there's there's a bunch of odds movement um yeah. where i feel like some like yeah, I, I don't know. I just think that's good information for especially, uh, you know, novice betters out there, like being able to hear like, oh, maybe the price that's written isn't ac the actual price you're going to get. Um, but, you know, we we uh, 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 our, our friend Bill uh, messaged me uh, and he he was like, I loved your rant last week. So let's uh, I, I mean, we could give him another rant, but uh, why, why don't we? Uh, why don't we actually go ahead and uh, look at uh, look at these races here? So uh, we got. We'll start with the uh, the late pick three here, and, and we're going to start with uh, all weather racing, uh, race eight here, the Oi Tung handicap here. We're going to go twelve hundred meters on the all weather track, and um, you know, I landed on uh, two horses here. Um, both of them, uh, they're going to be pretty high weight. But they got, uh, they got, I think, something I always like to see, and that's the inside draw here in the two Magniac and the three Packing Bowl. Um, now, the three Packing Bowl, I think, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, obviously be your favorite and take a lot of money. I mean, you look at this horse, the horse is a completely different horse running on the all weather track. Uh, you know, he's got a first and a second on the all weather track. And, uh, you know, just not doesn't hasn't done run as well. I mean, basically run dead last or or second to last in three of his last uh, turf starts. So clearly, this is an all weather horse, um, and uh, you know has shown speed uh, on the all weather and is drawn in the two post. And I, I see no reason why this horse isn't going to be out there on the lead. And you know, in in America, we know speed is king on dirt racing. So. I don't really think there's there's much more you need to say about the three packing bowl. Um, the two Magniac, I think, is uh, is got a little bit more of a maybe a little bit more of a dirtied up form. Um, you know, on the on the PPs I have uh, posted up here, right? You can only see the last five races, and uh, if you go all the way back to that fifth race, right, you see a a fourth in a, a field of eight. Um, and you see that's in class two. Well, we're not in class two. We're in class three now, right? So we're dropping in class. And and the horse has been in this class for the last three uh, or the last four races. But, you know, the the race four back was kind of one of those weird, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. It, you know, the, it had the, one of the 10-pound bugs aboard. Um, you know, it was kind of one paced in that race. Uh, I mean, ran okay, uh, but but still ran six um, six for uh, ninth there, and then you see ten post, ten post, ten post, and you see the horse just not doing and a, a lick of running. Uh, I mean, literally all three of them say tough trip. Um, you know how bad the trip was. Uh, I'm I'm not entirely sure in, in all three of those, but 
What I will say is when you're drawing on the rail, you generally are able to get a, a much better trip. And, you know, you're getting uh, at Zenny aboard uh, who, you know, is middle of the road uh, type jock here at, um, at, at Shotin. And, you know, I just thought that if you kind of go back and look at the last time this horse was drawn on the rail, once again, I mean, like I said, we're going pretty far back, but we're looking at a race up a class where the horse didn't embarrass himself and, and ran fourth, uh, you know, by four lengths there. Um, so I think uh, coming off the layoff, uh, coming here, getting the rail draw again, uh, getting a, uh, a a good jock aboard. I mean, Hugh Bowman rode this horse last time out, and, you know, I, I just think that that there's there's some ability here uh you know they uh um uh, whether the like i said whether the horse just got absolutely awful trips the last three times whether it's just the post being drawn outside i you know i'm crossing the line through a bunch of these races and i i think that uh that that magniac's definitely in here with the shot uh having uh you know kind of lost the draw lottery the last three races so i oh, those are the only two horses i have here i got the two magniac i got the three packing bowl uh, where did you land? Yeah, I'll, I'll actually start on the horses that you picked because those are the two horses that I wasn't really sure what to do with um, for a couple of reasons, right? One, Magniac, it's looked way off for him, right? He's had races back in, you know, January of last year that would, you know, dust this field by at least a length, if not a couple. But then the races since have looked really bad. And whether that's, hey, you moved up in class, hey, you've gotten bad draws, hey, you've lost some form. I don't know, right? I think that's one of the ones that I would want to watch the price on and say, hey, if it drifts up because of the recent run of bad form, I do want to play that. And I would probably play it over the three um, in that case. But if, you know, Magnet's middle of the road and everyone's kind of seeing what I'm seeing, I don't think I'd take below, I don't know, eight to one, 10 to one on that horse, maybe, um, just because I'm not really sure how that horse is going to run back. Um, Packing Bowl, I really liked from a, a fig perspective, as well as the seven Viva Chaleur. My problem with that, you mentioned Hugh Bowman was riding last year. Now Jerry Chow's up. Jerry Chow was 0 for 18 on the dirt last year. I don't know how you know that's going to go, right? You're definitely not getting an upgrade from a jock perspective in that respect because he just hasn't, you know, he doesn't ride well on the dirt. And it's, it's a very different thing. You do see a lot of different numbers of jockeys riding on dirt and riding on turf. And granted, they're always low numbers, right? Predominantly, this is a turf racing, you know, venture and you get very few dirt races. So it's hard to read into any stats. I actually don't adjust stats the same way that I adjust uh, for turf because, you know, it's hard to adjust post positions. It's hard to say, hey, your race was, you know, the, the surface was slow or fast on a given day because you only have one race usually running, if not, you know, maybe a couple. But yeah, I mean, I, I think... I made the, you know, kind of the two, three, and the seven all tentative Bs, and we'll probably only play two of them based on, you know, what I see the prices come up as on those future odds. My guess is that if the three is short, right, if it's below five or six to one, I probably won't even include it. And just, you know, if Jerry Child finds a great dirt race, tip my cap and move on, right? The horses that I made as A's then, I really like the four, um, self-improvement. Self-improvement, I think, does have races that win this. Obviously, you know, coming off a win in class four and then not showing too, too well. Well, it showed okay last turf or last all-weather race. Uh, granted, it was a wet course. But you do get Karis Teton, who, you know, arguably is the best dirt rider here. He's upwards of 20%. I think he's even pushing Zach's numbers on dirt. So he may be the best jockey coming into here. Don't love the post, but I do think draw doesn't matter as much on the all weather just because it's such a tight course. You don't lose as much ground being wide. So I really like that horse. I think I'll, I'll you know, take the four as an A and use that just because I don't have as many questions. I think that, you know, dirt form has been more consistent than a lot of the others in this race. And it's kind of staying a consistent weight to last out, picking up four pounds or so, but it's not too, too much. The other horse that I wanted to take a flyer on was a 12, unpresuming. That horse has never tried dirt. It does get Alexi Bedell up, I believe. Yeah. And, you know, low weight, good draw. Hasn't tried dirt before, but has shown well. And Bedell is a 15% jockey on dirt last year. 
I think it's worth a, a chance. You have a lot of horses that have shown some dirt form, but these dirt races get very screwy. And I feel like people don't know how to cap them. And I feel like you can sneak in with a horse that has shown some ability and is trying a surface for the first time, right? I don't think this is just a flyer race to try and move down to class four, although maybe it is. Maybe they're just trying to show so badly in class three that they want to move back down to the turf in class four. We'll find out. But Hey, I think it's worth a shot given um, kind of all the factors, getting a good job, getting a low weight, getting a decent draw. And so I'll have the 412 as A's, and then we'll check on the 2, 3, or 7 to what we go with B's. And I'll be pretty wide here just because I'm always nervous trying to cap dirt here. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. not, it's not really comfortable to try and go. So, All right, let's move on to uh, race 9 here. We're going to be going five furlongs here, the 1,000 meters straight, the Lok Wa handicap class three racing uh matt i'll let you start here where did you land yeah my went to two two horses really quick uh, first the one carroll street right obviously dropping from class two this is definitely a thousand meter horse right if you look i think the horse has 26 races lifetime it's hit the board 11 out of 13 going a thousand meters and everything else it's one for 13 hitting the board so those last few races have not been at a thousand meters i like it getting back to a thousand meters it's been closing pretty well on some pretty slow class two races if you have a you know straight race in class two with that's going pretty slow and you're closing in to me that's showing really well and then when you're doing that against class three right like it should be the class of this field, right? Um, you know, I'm not going to try and play any sort of, you know, track bias or anything like that on a thousand meters first up. I don't know what this course is going to do. You look towards last year and you had to really be on the stand side rail. I don't think that happens yet this year. I don't think the course is baked out enough, so I'm going to play it pretty fair. And so I think that one, you know, regardless of draw and regardless of position, um, sets up really well. And that's where my eye went. The other place it went was to the new rider to uh, Brittany Wong. Um, and the only reason I want to bet Brittany Wong here is because she is going to be riding at 105 pounds. That is insane, right? If you have the low weight and you're at 115 and then you're getting an extra 10 on that, I don't care how good or bad your horse is, you're going to be flying. And she actually showed pretty well, I think, on the on the thousand meter race last time. I think she's got one race under her belt and she hit the board. And uh, yeah, she's she's one for one hitting the board. She can't ride a happy value yet because she's brand new. But um, so last week, right? I mean, she rode well. Um, and look, you know, I think if you think back to some of the stats that I posted on Twitter at the end of last season, right? The thing that I tried to do was just, you know, scan some stuff and say, hey, how, you know, is anything going to surprise me, right? Is anything going to stand out and say, Hey, how can I, you know, analyze this data? You know, what am I going to go to? It's that, you know, weight matters the longer you go, but it actually really matters at this shortest distance, these thousand meter flat races, weight matters a ton. And I didn't expect that. I thought weight wouldn't really matter because you're just going so short, right? Just take the fastest horse. It's not going to matter all that much, but it did. I think you saw lower weight horses really do have a chance. And so, Hey, hundred, 105 pounds, it's a rocket. Send it. <laughs> um, so the one and the 14 are my two A's. I think I'll use the two flying high as a B just because that's the one horse in here that I think has probably shown consistency, right? Every other horse is kind of trying something new, doing something different. And, you know, the two's never done anything wrong. And, you know, as much as I bag on Lyle Hewitson, Lyle Hewitson was a 20% jock at a thousand meters last year, 40% in the money about, um, You know, I I think it's actually an advantage. He does well at one thing, and it's this. So I'll use that one as my B. So I'll be one in the 14 as A's, and then the two flying high as my B in here. Yeah, uh, as per usual, we don't land on any horses uh, in common. We're spreading wide. Bet them all. (laughs) Um, I landed on two horses in here. Uh, I think my top pick in this race uh, is going to be a first-time starter. Uh, here in Hong Kong, uh, that's gonna be the 11 Savvy Brilliant. Um, and you know, call me a simp if you want, but I feel like I've talked, I talked about this angle last year, and, and I think it hit uh, a first time starter in Hong Kong, Zach Purton gets aboard. I mean, I like this is just well meant, well meant up to the nth degree. Um, and the horse obviously won on the straight. And I like, and maybe I I could be wrong. You can correct me, but horses drawn on the 12 post. And I'm pretty sure that 
being drawn outside isn't uh, isn't all that bad going uh, yeah, going you, five furlongs. You generally want to be on that stand side rail, so the fourteen draw is like your ideal spot, and this as opposed to most where you think it's the one draw. But yeah, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I don't have the the stats to to back it up, but I know I, off the top of my head um, that generally I, I like seeing the outside draw on, on the straight. So you get a favorable draw. You get Zach Pert in the board. I, I'm I'm curious what we're gonna see on price on this horse um, because I feel like last time I saw this, uh, the, the horse ended up going off at a price I didn't think um, I thought was was kind of nuts. So so uh, I, I I definitely think of the there's another first time starter in, in the Ten Eternal Fortune, and, and you know you might look at that and like oh that looks great and, you know coming from Great Britain but that was all uh, on on Tapita those wins so uh this is one that coming off of a five furlong win coming straight here from australia someone bought this up right away after that first race so um really interested to see uh what kind of price we get but top pick here and then my second choice is going to be the uh the six stellar express uh which you know is what you kind of mentioned the 13 14 post is uh is is the draw you want um and you know, I, I like seeing this horse coming back to the five furlongs. Um, you know, you go back to uh, five back, and you have arguably the horse's best race. Um, and now you're three pounds down in weight. Um, you kind of, you know, they, they stretch the horse out going around the turn, and the horse kind of regressed off that. So now getting a layoff, uh, we're getting uh, you know the horse coming down the straight again, and uh, you get the favorable draw in the fourteen post. Um, I I think that uh, I, I expect improvement from the six, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see this one win. So, um, not not getting I, I think too too creative here. I wouldn't be surprised if if we got uh, you know some some shortish prices here. But I, I like the six Stellar Express, and I like the eleven Savvy Brilliant. No rebuttal from Matt. Normally he normally he's. I like, mean, I, I looked at both, right? I, I I was, I thought the exact same thing as you of like, hey, Zach's up, and it's gonna take too much money, and I don't want it because mm -hmm. horses debuting in class three probably not a great play. Zach probably not a great play. And then every time I say that, horse is gonna go off like eight to one, and I'll be like, well, what the f? Like I <laughs> I I would have betted at eight to one. That's mm -hmm. what happened last year. I was like, it still bothers me. So. Got a long memory of all my losers. Can't remember the winners, though. <laughs> all right. Uh, so we're going to move to race 10, the U-Tongue Handicap here. We're going to be going the unicorn distance of seven furlongs, 1,400 meters here, one-turn race here at uh, at Shatin. And um, I landed on uh, I landed on three horses in the spot. Um, I think my top pick is going to be down in uh number 13 here uh and that's a uh, greenwich here uh am, am i pronouncing that right you're from the east coast it, it depends if you, are. <laughs> you can pronounce it green it greenwich if you're not from there if you have money you'd pronounce it greenwich but um but uh yeah so uh at zenny riding here um and yeah you know I don't really kind of know what uh, what happened last time. Um, you know, seemed to get kind of a similar trip that he did the time before on Class 4 and just, I don't know, seemed to just not run as well. I mean, moving up in class, right, maybe you expect a little bit of regression or, you know, maybe if, you know, you, you finish, you know, you, you lose, you lose by a couple of lengths or something, but to lose by 11, 11 and three quarters lengths, uh, something probably was up there. Um, you know, maybe the horse is just, just tired by the end of the year. Um, but I don't know the race two back looked really good. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking we're hopefully hoping for a similar trip, uh, as the race two back. Um, so, um, obviously I like seeing a win at the distance at the track. Um, so, um, and and first up, the horses run okay with the second and the third and three tries. So, um, yeah, I I kind of uh, kind of like this thirteen here, uh, low weight. Um, I mean, drawn a little bit outside, but I, I you know has won from this type of uh, outside draw before. Um, and then uh, the five fortunate son. 
you know, I, I, I like this horse here because you're looking at a horse that debuted at Happy Valley going, uh, going a little over a mile and, and ran fine. Um, you know, tend to, you know, kind of rallied past a couple of horses, made up, made up a little bit of ground at, at a kind of huge price and you're getting second time up here. Um, my real concern is the post, you know, drawn out in the 12th post here. Last time was drawn in the two post. Um, so maybe, uh, maybe a little bit of concern, um, with, uh, with seeing that, but I don't know. I just kind of looking at where some of these other horses ran and this is, this is the horse second time here. Um, you know, and before that start at, uh, happy Valley, uh, I believe was two wins one second in three career starts. So, you know, is, is a horse that had shown some talent before coming to Hong Kong. So, um, you know, I, I think maybe he just needed that race. Now has some more time to get acclimated, um, and, and second time. And, and I really don't think that race was was that bad. I, there's some some trouble noted, but you know, I'll have to go back and watch replay see see how big big of a um, problem that actually was. So I have those two marked as my A's, and then my B is the six low pan spirit. Um, you know, I, this is another one that maybe if it was drawn a little bit better, I would um, I would have uh as an a but if you look, look four back the horse did win from an outside draw so um you know i, I kind of like this horse because of a little bit of a porn pattern right the horse has got two wins and in between those two wins he's got a little bit of a little bit of regression there um and um you know i think as a versatile type uh you know ha has gone to the lead one wire to wire has sit you know just off the leader uh and and won and you know it, it looks like this is a horse that that just needs a little bit of time between starts um you know you, you kind of see that every other pattern here um and uh yeah so now we're on the we're on the other or the every we're on the good side of the every other pattern so i, I like the six low pan spirit here um for uh for mr bentley so uh i got the five and the 13 as a's and i got the six as a b Matt, where did you land? Yeah, I'll start with the six. I like the six a lot here. I think, um, you know, a lot of what you said, I think that horse is probably improving. I think for a couple of reasons, you can forgive the last out, right? Chased a pretty fast pace into a course that I don't think was favoring speed. Um, obviously, the question is, hey, it was its first run up in class three. Can it compete up here? We'll find out. But, you know, I think there's a good chance, especially at the layoff, like you said, that this horse is just a class of the field. I don't know what price you get. Um, this may be the favorite in here. Um, but, yeah, I think I'd be willing to say that it's a deserving favorite, if so, and take that as an A. I think the other horse I wanted to make as an A is actually a horse that you chased a couple times last year. And mm. I thought, you know, I was against uh, a fair bit, but now I'm back on it. So I'm surprised to see you off of it. You've already scrolled down to it. You already know it's the nine prey for mirror. <laughs> I, I actually like that horse a lot and I don't mind the cutback. I think the race that impressed me most was the race two back where it showed good fight onto the line, right? It was one of those races where just visually you see a horse that should be dead to rights, you know, kind of coming back through the field, but it's not, it runs on it actually re rallies to the line. And that's something that you don't see too, too much in Hong Kong. And so I think I, you know, kind of stable that I took it in my head last time. I'm like, Hey, this is actually a racehorse, right? This is one that I think has talent and ability to win at the level. Cause it could show something like that. And then, of course, I bet at the next out and it ran four wide and just, you know, mm -hmm. got a horrific ride and had no, no chance whatsoever in, in any aspect. And so, OK, oh, well. But, hey, I think whenever I, you know, kind of take those mental notes, you know, I want to come back to that horse. And I think this is an OK spot. I think, you know, you're getting that fourth up race. You're getting off the layoff. You know, I think fourth up is a decent angle here. If you're going to take them right if a horse doesn't kind of win by their first three races the fourth is usually where you get make or break either that horse is a you know one that's going to win it's going to hit that right weight in the right draw finally to match its ability or it's not and you're going to end up seeing it kind of go six seven eight nine races where it doesn't win and so i think this is the kind of make or break race especially as a four-year-old right it's gonna this is where you'd expect it to kind of show if if it has anything so 
I'm going to take that as an A. I think you get a decent price kind of given the, the ability. And I think, hey, it could show something that's not necessarily on paper um, and run really well. My B that I'll use in here is a horse that I've chased for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's the 10, the air. Um, I, it's just one of those horses I keep chasing that never wins, right? You see 0 for 8. You see hitting the board a lot. These are the horses that you should not bet. But of course, I bet it last time. And my notes, actually, I look back at, you know, when I bet this in July. And the note that I wrote was, don't think this horse wants a mile, but we'll find out. Turns out it didn't want a mile. Um, hmm. And now it cuts back. Now it cuts back to seven furlongs. So good for me. Hey, it, it tried a mile. It, you know, clearly didn't want that. Good thing about trying something you don't, a horse doesn't want to do in Hong Kong is you get weight breaks off of that, right? You run shitty and you get a few extra pounds and that just benefits you for getting back to what you do want to do. So, you know, you get some weight, you get a decent draw. I'm willing to give it another chance. So I'll be the six, nine as A's and then use the 10, the air as a, as a B in here. And, you know, I'll say sign the divorce papers after this, if the horse doesn't run, but we all know I'm going to come right back to it again. If, uh, if it doesn't, uh, fit. so it's just me. Ah, uh, well, you know, I know we, uh, you know, we decided that we're going to try and look at another race on the card here. Um, and, uh, I think you went and looked at race four, but I guess I'll go first here with, with race six. Um, you know, I think this one amazing fun is going to take a ton of money. People are going to see Zach aboard first time out going five furlongs and the horse wins by three quarters of the length, 15 to one. This is another chance where we're another race where we're like, we let Zach beat us at 15 to one. What the hell are we doing? Um, and they immediately turn and put this horse on dirt. Some smells fishy. Um, you know, I, I I I don't understand why this horse is running on the all weather. So I went and I kind of was looking through this race, and you know, I, I don't think I'm I'm necessarily taking a huge, huge uh stand here or anything like that, but I think the three Shanghai style um, is, is coming in here, uh, you know, winning that last race, going wire to wire, uh, gets the bug to stay aboard. And I, I don't know. I think that there's another shot here where um, he might be able to just get that lead from that seven post. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of the speed is kind of drawn outside of him. So, I think there's a really, really good shot that the three Shanghai style is able to kind of get that same trip he did last time, even though he was on the rail from the seven post here. Um, you know, uh, now granted, right. He won last time at 53 to one. And, and maybe if you didn't go to the, you know, didn't go to the wedding, don't go to the funeral here. But I, I think that there's a shot that this horse ends up being your third or fourth choice in this race. And, uh can upset this one amazing fun so the three shanghai style is kind of where i landed for my uh my bet kind of outside of uh of the late pick three here so race six i like the three shanghai style matt where did you land you said you were on race four right i, I was on race four i i gotta respect you for actually you know you get to choose races and you chose the other dirt race on the card. So good for you. <laughs> I'm a sicko. What can I say? <laughs> that's, that's even the level of degeneracy that I can't, you know, can't go to. Um, <laughs> I did go to race four, uh, cause you know, as a fellow sicko, I'm like class five racing. That's gotta be great. Um, I will say the horse that you probably should bet in this race is the five servant. That's the horse that makes logical sense on paper. So, you know, if that one wins great, the horse that my eye went to was the one circuit blazing. And this is a horse that makes absolutely no sense on paper. It has never run a step. Uh, it has run four class four races and I think finished out almost the back in all of them, right? Finishes at 12, 12, 13 and 14. That's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. um, but if a couple things, right? One, you look, those draws, as you've already highlighted for me, have been horrific, right? Breaking from the 11 post, 12 post, 12 post, 12 post. Those are bad. And now it gets the one draw. Fantastic. And I think you'll always get value on these horses that have just run absolutely terrible in a higher class and then drop down to class five, right? Class five is really bad racing. And 
not that class four is good racing necessarily, especially for a horse that doesn't show anything. But when you're racing against horses that you have shown can't win in class five, right. Or have shown kind of a, a distinct lack of ability, right. You have all of these horses that have built up and shown over time, Hey, they belong in class five. I want to take the horse that I know, or at least may have a chance to not belong in class five. Um, it's funny. Cause like, you know, I don't, you look at trials too much. If you read the notes on the trial of this horse, it looked actually horrific too. Uh, mm. It's a, like acted up behind the gate. Look at, and I watched the trial and I'm like, that wasn't that bad. Right? It actually got the lead. It showed some speed. It showed something it hadn't done before, uh, you know, racing up and being near the lead. So I think this horse has a chance to show something that it has not shown before. And I do think this is one of those types that, you'll get a very, very, very high price on a, an astronomical price. And if you play it each way and it hits the board or it wins, right? You're making your whole card, right? You're making the whole day off of this one horse. I always like those. I, you know, my fault is I probably toss the chalk too readily, hmm. but this is a case where I'm like, okay, like play the bomb, right? Like you got to take the chance at it. So I'll be, I'll be trying the one circuit blazing, We'll see how it goes. If this horse finishes way out the back, then so be it. You got the right price on it, regardless. So worth a chance. Yeah. Yeah. I think in this race, um a horse that I kind of had looked at a little bit was the nine go hero. Um, I thought that there wasn't much speed in this race, and the speed that there might be in here is kind of drawn uh drawn poorly i think like the 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 three island golden has shown a little bit of speed um but you know he's drawn all the way out in the 13 post um i think the four so awesome has shown a little bit of speed he's drawn in the six post which which is fine but um i may there might be a shot that the nine go hero is just faster early and maybe uh you know, he he dropped down six uh, six pounds from that last uh, last effort, um, and uh, you know maybe he's got uh, maybe he's got a shot to uh, to get the lead. I mean, you hate to see easy lead and then caught one ten, but hey, maybe yeah. we we maybe you give another shot to this one. But um, yeah, I, I tried. Th this was actually a race that I did look at uh, for for my possible play, and then at like a sicko, I landed on the uh, I landed on the dirt <laughs> the dirt race. So. Um, hey, the things we do for content, right? But that's going to do it for us here on You've Got to Be Shot Tinning Me. Uh, obviously, check us out at ontherongleed.com, at wrong underscore lead on Twitter. Matt is at slow and steadied. I am at cherry drank. Uh, episode of Drank and Champagne obviously came out on uh, Wednesday. You can check that out. Uh, Rewatch our live stream that we did Thursday covering the late pick five at Aqueduct. Uh, obviously, we uh, also I'm, I'm going to be on with uh, the Wolf Folk Lawn. You can check that out on the Notorious OTB on your favorite podcast app. Like, subscribe, hit all the buttons. Let's make some money, guys. Good luck, everybody.